you could do like melody, play melody, because I have my little harmony okay. thing. But, um, is that is that written in there like that? Where's that I, from? I thought you remembered that from an anthem or something like. Yeah, that. I do. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, yeah, no, it's not I've in the hymnal. It. It like it's written like that. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Angel to improvise. What's going on? <laughs> and yet, <laughs> I was not. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's I don't even just let her know. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. I might I'll just play melody on that and let you two do the whole. <laughs> you do your over. thing. <laughs> uh, do, you yeah. want, do, you want, do you want some drums for what you're doing now? I don't know what I'm doing for a all who are worshiping with Northbrook Presbyterian Church here in the sanctuary and online on this first Sunday of 2022. We are Lily, Hope, and Nathan, Larson Walbrink, and whoever you are, whatever your background, and whether you are with us in person or via the live stream, we are glad that you are with us and we hope you find just what your soul needs as together we are learning to live the love of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the responsive call to worship printed in your bulletin. Arise, shine, our light has come. The, the glory, glory of God, God has, has risen, risen upon us. us. Tell the good news throughout the earth. The saving grace, grace of Jesus Christ for us. Come and adore the Savior of all nations. We, we offer the gifts of our lives to the Lord. Let us pray. Everlasting God, the, the radiance of faithful souls who brought, to, who brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising, fill the world with your glory and show us your and show yourself to all nations through him who is true light and, who, and, and the bright morning star. Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you, enable, as you are able in body or spirit for our first hymn.
God judges the nations with righteousness and answers the poor with justice. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Glory of God, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and pour out the gifts of your spirit that, forgiven and renewed, we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. The mercy of the Lord is like rain, like showers that water the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another by this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, as we pass a peace in person, please honor the boundaries of your neighbors. If you are with us online, we invite you to share greetings of peace in the comments section. The peace of Christ be with you now. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Please be seated. 
And uh, Lily, Hope, and Nathan, why don't you come down? We're going to have you do double duty. Uh, we can be liturgist and then join Kayana and I for a, for a moment. Right. So Kayana's going to join us in just a minute here, uh, but um, we are going to be talking today about the Magi. Do you know what that word is, the Magi? What is it? Uh, the three kings that come from where? Where do they come from? North, south, east, or west? Oh, well, come on. Come on over, Kayana. They come from the east. Yes, they come from the east. Uh, and here's the tricky thing, y'all. We're going to notice this. Uh, listen when the scripture is read for how many magi there are. Right? Because actually they're very clear that there are three gifts. But they never say how many magi come. Um, what were you going to say? I don't know. Um, I, I thought this was that had like seven magi. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a little more biblically accurate. Um, we don't know exactly how many. Uh, and we don't know exactly where they're from, but I was talking with Kayana before the service, and there is some speculation uh, that because they were from the East, uh, in the East uh, was the great Persian Empire at that time, which has a very ancient religion called Zoroastrianism, and they paid attention to the stars. And that has a very important role in our scripture today. Um, did you want to? Do you have any thoughts you wanted to share about them? Hmm. I mean, uh, tell you about Persia. Tell us about Persia. So uh, Persia was this great empire from um, the Middle East, and it uh, basically was around the time that Jesus, not Jesus, but the, when the Old Testament was around, and then sometime before Jesus, it was conquered by Alexander the Great mm -hmm. and put into the Greek Empire. And, but it slowly diminished and now it is uh, normally considered Iran and Iraq right now. Yeah. So as we talk, so, so all, all, all year actually, Kayana has been sharing us about different cultures and different religions, right? In the Old Testament, they were very strict about where they thought God was working and how they were supposed to associate or not, mostly not, with those people over there, right? But again and again in scripture, we find God working through those people. And this is one of those stories, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you. We thank you. For ancient cultures. For ancient cultures. And the way you bring good news to us. And the way you bring good news to us. Through them. Through them. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy One, send, send your spirit, the spirit that we've heard about so much in the anticipation and the preparation for the coming of Jesus, the spirit that was alive and moving them and is alive and moving today. Open us in this new year that your word would be about the transformation of our lives and of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to take a quick shift today. Normally, uh, we have spent a whole chunk of time in the Gospel of Luke, and we're going to continue in the Gospel of Luke, um, moving up into the season of Epiphany. But for today, we're going to hear the story of those magi. Listen again to this story you may have heard before. Uh, with new ears from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem 
asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem for the child, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, They left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm going to start off with two sort of caveats this morning. Um, Did you notice someone occupied a lot of space in this scripture today? That someone is Herod, right? Herod is not happy with the visit of these wise people because it means his power is threatened. Herod is afraid. Herod is manipulative. Herod is acting in secret. And frankly, I don't want to talk about Herod right now. Okay? Are we okay with that? Here's the caveat, right? Uh, a year ago, we, at this time, we had an erection. Or, uh, uh, oh my goodness. A resurrection. Wow, we can laugh at that right now. We got that on the live stream. I'm like, is that... Is that a Freudian slip? I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Herod. But things happen. Whew, they do. Uh, We had an insurrection at our nation's capital. We are looking forward to this year with optimism, maybe some weariness. But we, we do good to remember that politics is always at play in our world and in Scripture. All right, can I just leave that right there for now? We might come back to that later. Actually, reading through Luke, we will. It's coming. But I need to talk about my kids this morning. Uh, and I, and uh, pastors are never supposed to use kids as sermon illustrations, especially when kids are the liturgist on their last day of vacation, right? That would be a cold, cold thing to do. So, and Lily's staring me down right now. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm not going to tell you which one it is. And, and actually, uh, this, is a, this is a great story. So it's not, don't worry, you guys are fine. I, I don't know if it's the season, but I'm, I'm stuck on holding babies right now. You know, you heard, you heard me talk about this on Christmas Eve. There's, there's a memory that I have seared in my mind. I'm not going to tell you which one. But there was one that took a little extra effort to get to sleep at night. And I don't know if y'all remember this, I figured out the dad's bounce. It was kind of a lift and a drop and a sway back and forth. And I would do the dad bounce in the, in the dark nursery. And there was, I, I, I had to have just enough light in there. So what I did is I had the light on in the closet, but the closet doors were closed. Uh, but there was just, just like a, a, a ray of light coming through those closet doors. And I swear, every night with this child, as I rocked and rocked, their eyes 
were focused on that light. If I shifted this way, that little, that little head would turn to follow the light. And I, I found myself wondering, in awe, at this new, newborn creature making their way uh, on this earth and having spent their first nine months in total darkness, focused on this light. And I found myself asking the question, what do you know that I don't know? What do you know? Like, I, I always had this thought that babies came into this world knowing all these important things uh, that, that I really wanted to, to know. And I think, about those, I think about those magi from a foreign land doing all those kinds of things like studying stars that was technically forbidden by the people of Jesus, and yet they knew something that no one in that area knew. Only a handful of people, right, at that point. The only people that knew were those shepherds, the people that, 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 that they told in the community, right? We learned last week that, that Anna and Simeon knew, so there was a little bit of a buzz, but it didn't make its way to Herod. But with the arrival of these magi, there was no doubt that God was up to something. God was up to something in, in ways they didn't expect or imagine. And, and those people knew about it. Curious. Curious. And yes, it would be threatening to Herod in ways Herod didn't imagine. But we're not talking about Herod right now. Yesterday, we had our uh, second soul stroll. And I'm, I, I, I love looking out and seeing some of you who have been on one of our soul strolls so far. They're going to be the first Saturday of each month. And we're just going to keep doing them through the season. And we're just going to take some time to slow down and observe. And I, I love something happened yesterday uh, as, we were, as we were walking through the church grounds. Something that, that I learned one of, our, one of our participants was grieving something that used to be there that wasn't there. The youth house, right? The youth house. Now, I, I'm, the youth house hasn't been here since I've been here, so I have no idea about this house. But this person was talking about how important it was to them and how, how much they miss it that wasn't there. And I thought about how important it is as we move forward to hold on to those memories and experiences that have formed us in, in the past. And I don't, I don't know why, but I was drawn in that, in that silence to something uh, that for me is always a reminder of the Holy Spirit. You'll probably hear me mention this in sermons four or five times a year, because I need a reminder. Years ago, when I was in India, struggling, homesick, culture shock, didn't know where I was, who I was, or where God was, I looked out from my balcony window and I saw the wind blowing through the palm trees. And somehow I remembered the scripture that says, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. It blows where it will. And I thought, okay, I'm not alone. And every time I pause and look up and I see the wind blowing through the leaves, I remember the Holy Spirit. And I remember that last night, looking right out there as the wind blew through the tops of the pine trees. It's really important for me to be reminded that God is present and working. I've actually spent last fall working with a guy named Alan Roxborough and, and pastors from North America and Canada to start to sort of sharpen our spirit senses to try to imagine what God is doing in this season now, right? We are all familiar that Northbrook and countless mainline Presbyterian churches, and for that matter, evangelical churches around America are on the decline. We ain't what we used to be, right? That's an old story. But it doesn't mean God has stopped working. And maybe the invitation for the season is to look around us in the neighborhood to where God may be working. One of my favorite translations of John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, remember the, in the beginning was the, the word, and the, the word was the light. And I love, I love the 
the line, the, tra- the Eugene Peterson translation, God pitched a tent in the neighborhood, right? God became flesh and dwelt among us. God pitched a tent in the neighborhood. I'm daring to believe that God is up to something in our neighborhood, and it is our invitation and our challenge to look and listen beyond what we know and enter into relationship with those people, whoever those magi are today, that just might be seeing something that we don't see from our vantage point. And in fact, we're going to be putting together a team of people. They've already said yes to this invitation. And next week when we, commission, when we ordain and install our deacons and elders, we're going to commission this team to work on this neighborhood project to discern, to listen, to build relationships, and then actually to experiment, to try something totally new, totally out of our comfort zones, and then reflect. What did we learn? How did we fail? What's our next step? What was God doing through it all? I'm so excited for this journey ahead, for what it means for us, for Northbrook, to discover what God was doing. And I love how in this story, we get a foretaste of what might happen. You know, sometimes I get focused on those verbs, those verbs in the scripture. And I love these verbs of what happens to those magi. First, they see Jesus. Did you notice that? They saw Jesus, and the next thing they did is they worship Jesus. And the next thing they did is they opened their treasure boxes and they gave. I love this invitation to see what God is doing, to be in awe of what God is doing, and then to be opened so that we can give, so that we can contribute to what God is doing. I also want to want to focus. I know I get a little nerdy about the language, but I want to focus. Did you catch the joy in there? When they saw Jesus, they rejoiced. I want to just point out how, how much the Greek emphasizes that joy. Uh, we have, they rejoiced, caro, with joy, kara, great, megas, right? So they rejoiced with great joy. And if that wasn't enough, they add the Greek word shodra, which means exceedingly. They rejoiced with great, exceeding joy. Anyone believe that kind of joy can be a part of your life right now? Man, I listened to my sermon last year when it was our first holidays with the pandemic. I I don't know if the numbers then were as high as they are now. And yet, it's not gonna stop God from doing what God will do. And in fact, these circumstances, as awful as they may be for us, may be opportunities, may be opportunities to see what God's doing, to be in awe of what God's doing, to be open to give and rejoice. Friends, you, may you have joy in this new year. May you have great joy. May you have exceedingly great joy. May it be so. Amen.
stand as you are able as we share our affirmation of faith. Every time we gather around Christ's table, we share the Nicene Creed, the creed shared by believers around the globe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We remember the gifts of those magi and we are aware that God has gifted us time and talents and treasure. And so now we offer our gifts to Christ's ministry in this place and to all those partners that we support throughout this neighborhood and throughout the world. We continue to worship God with our offering. through even just a little bit of labor to get here, just to get here this morning. And my hunch is, is that you, you fueled up, that you put some food in your body to give you the energy you need to pull out that shovel. 
maybe even took some time to pray this morning to give yourself the fuel that you need. It's the amazing thing about this God who gives God's very self to us is that not only is it exactly what we need to be all we were created to be, but it gives us the strength, the energy to serve this world that Christ loves. This invitation is not only to gather around this table and break bread with all of the saints through every time and place. We're connected with all who have gone before. We partake in the foretaste of what is to come when we all will be together breaking bread in laughter and in joy. We're also being fed for this moment right here, right now so that we can be God's people in this place, in this time. Whoever you are, whether you've been here recently or whether you haven't been here in a long time, whether you come here with faith or doubt, with joy or pain, maybe a mix, mix of all of it, Christ invite you, invites you whoever you are, to celebrate this feast with him. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. We thank you that your spirit brooded over the chaos of the deep at the beginning of creation, and your spirit brooded when you announced that Mary would bear you into this world. Your spirit brooded as those shepherds learned of your coming on the hillside. Your spirit brooded when Simeon and Anna recognized you. Your spirit brooded drawing those wise ones from the east God and your spirit broods among us right now. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels, the archangels, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, we thank you that the full, in the fullness of time, you were born among us. And that in the fullness of time, you gave your life for us. We thank you that in the fullness of time, you will return that you have not let us go, that you are praying for us even now, and you have given us a calling and a commission to be a blessing for this world that you love. Indeed, great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God, in this season of gift giving, we thank you for the ultimate gift that you have given of yourself to us. Trusting the power of that gift, we pray now the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember when Christ gathered his disciples in a room, those same disciples that he called friends. And he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
The same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out for all creation. I shall not drink this cup again with you until we drink it together in the coming kingdom of God. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hopefully you have your elements with you at this time. In gratitude, let us share these gifts together. In gratitude for all the ways we offer ourselves to God's service, let us pray. God of majesty and light, you hold the world in your hand. We praise you that in Jesus Christ, all people may see your glory. We thank you for revealing Jesus to be your son and for claiming our lives in baptism to be his glad disciples. By your spirit, may peace descend upon us that we may follow him with grateful hearts. Take us and all we have to be useful in your service, God of all nations. In the gracious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are so glad that you are able to join us for this service. Your bulletin and the church website list several ways you can participate in Christ's ministry here at Northbrook. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the baptism of the Lord by installing and ordaining our new class of officers. As we begin a new year of ministry, we'll invite Misty and Isaac Chung to to preach to provide us a broader view of what it means to serve the body of Christ. Misty and Isaac are are Presbyterian mission workers who are being sent by a program called the Antioch Partners to Serve Christ in Central Asia. Please stand as you are able for our sending hymn.
And now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you are, may you be filled with the love of God, the faith of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.